everybody good morning and welcome back to my channel i hope y'all are doing well i hope um everybody's staying safe after the reopenings and everything Ugh, we ain't even gonna go there um <laughs> so today i wanted to make this video about something that has really been um weighing heavily on my mind in light of everything that's been going on um across the world, uh, especially in the U.S. with, uh, you know, Black Lives Matter um, movements and, um, you know, the defunding of police and all this, all this other stuff that's going on, this good juicy, juiciness going on, um, affecting cha the change that we need. I'm just thinking, you know, sort of to myself, what more? Like, the ball is already rolling what more could we be doing to to go ahead and give people freedom to to allow people to be free like completely free which is in the the whole point like anyway so one thing that um came to mind is you know with this black lives matter movement um are we excluding people? Are we excluding people in the Black Lives Matter movement? And I'm not talking about white, white lives matter and all that nonsense. What I'm talking about within black and brown communities, are there people that were saying, oh, no, not you. You see what I'm saying? For example, trans people, the LGBTQ community in general, are we, are we excluding them? Um, you know, are we excluding, because racism is, just bear with me, y'all, you might not agree initially, but hear me out. Racism is a part of the issue that we're seeing. I think the actual issue, like the root of all this nonsense, is the idea that I'm more powerful than you. I'm more valuable than you for whatever reason. You know, when, in the beginning, I'm assuming, because I wasn't here, everybody was the same. Everybody was just sort of walking around, figuring out life. Pretty much how it is now, the only exception to that is this perceived, um, we're playing a game. It's, it really is the matrix. Like, if you really think about it, when I was born, I didn't own anything. So at what point did people start buying into this idea of ownership? That's a whole nother discussion. But um, specifically what I wanted to, to address is trust issues within black and brown communities that we have with each other because even once we get rid of all this racism stuff we're still going to have these underlying issues right so i what sort of made me think about it is how the black lives matter um, movement is being discredited and essentially what what is being said is oh well uh we're welfare recipients and you know we're thieves and we're untrustworthy and you know there, there's really no reason to give us the the freedom that we were born into um because we couldn't be trusted with it anyway we would essentially self-destruct and i say you know in a sense, we have kind of bought into that dumbass belief. And, and I'll explain how. We have this history of colorism. Um, and it's global. It's not just America. It's all over the world. Um, if you're not familiar with what colorism is, it's essentially a 
prejudice that derives from the color of your skin, your like the tone. So you have light skin versus dark skin blacks or Asians or any other brown or black person. Inherently, they're more trustworthy um, as far as like um, social beliefs. Um, <laughs> essentially the idea of colorism originated um, specifically in the United States it originated with the idea that if you were black you were property if you were white you were a human property couldn't be human so there is this proximity thing like the closer you are to white the better like the main idea, essentially, is if you can't be white, be as close to it as you can be, right? There's this article I found from The Guardian um, discussing colorism specifically, and um, since it says to be a slave meant you were legally a non-person, unable to enter into legal contracts like marriage or land ownership not considered a citizen. Whiteness meant that blackness meant a person was property. Whiteness meant that blackness meant a person was property. Slavery was inherited and whether or not you were considered a slave was dependent on the status of your mother. The system ensured that male slave, white male slave owners who had children with black women the black women they enslaved contributed to their own wealth. Under this system, proximity to whiteness could increase your chances for freedom. If you, if you had a white father, and more importantly, if you looked white, the easier you could potentially claim some sort of freedom. So this is something that came with us. This was something that was sort of ingrained. And I, I think it's something we all need to take a moment and look at, consider, okay? So moving forward, that that's one example of why it's, I, I believe we, we might, we are considering black and brown people as untrustworthy. Another reason I thought about it is, you know, every, Around Christmas time, you see these um, loom things pop up, these um, like a, a money loom, essentially. Like there's a story behind it. It's, it's um, the history behind it is it's, uh, it derives from Africa. And uh, in Africa, they're called Suzu's. And essentially it's, uh, It's sort of a banking. Um, you you're, you're, you you invest a certain amount of money ever so often, and um, there's a rotational payout. There's a group of people that pay into it, and there's a, a way more than what you put into it initially is paid out to you. But it has to. It's based exclusive mostly on the ability to trust the people that you're investing with and this is what's so crazy i've actually partic participated in um a, I, they called it a loom but it's essentially a, a suzu i think a suzu is um bigger the looms are smaller it's like uh, the one i participated in it was like a hundred dollar investment to get eight hundred dollars back and you know basic math i was like all right let me you know go ahead and do it but um, the thing is, you have to sort of recruit two other people who are willing to make that same investment that you made. And this has to keep going. Well, um, the issue became people were doing, you know, cashing out. And like I said, this is something that has you know, existed for a long, long time. This is... Um, but nobody wanted to make the investment because it's like, oh, well, I don't know now if I'm going to get my money back. And it's like, all right, but, you know, 
we family <laughs> and you know it's not like you're going out and you're re recruiting random strangers <laughs> you're going out and you're you're explaining this to only two other people who want to make the con the contribution and you know it was it was <laughs> it's an entire thing every year every year it's scam 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 but we're so quick to run to like not me some us are so <laughs> quick to run to like payday um loan places those are scams those are ripoffs most of these systems out here in place for um poor people to get money quick are scams the only thing is they're federally regulated. But that doesn't really mean much for you. It doesn't mean much for you. You see what I'm saying? It's almost like we would prefer to run out and give our money to them instead of saying, you know what? I'm not really... <laughs> oh, another point I wanted to make to go along with that. You know how Asians buy blocks or like you you go into um any city America and there's a stretch of Asian owned businesses. You know how they do that? Zuzus, Zuzus, they call it something different, but um, they they make an investment to ensure that their people are good. It requires trust, though. All right, point number three. Cancel, this whole cancel culture. So, um, generally speaking, just seeing a lot of black and brown people, particularly black people, who will cancel brown and black owned businesses because they made a mistake, similar to something like McDonald's does all the time. Like, damn near every time. And... <laughs> I you I can't tell you how much money I've wasted at Walmart and at McDonald's and at all these other, like I've paid for things that never worked the first time type shit and too lazy to go back to return it and still went back to Walmart still went back to Dollar Tree still went back to Family Dollar and we all do it. You can't tell me you don't. Even if you don't shop at those stores in particular, you've been to a restaurant or some sort of business where they fucked your shit up and you went back. You didn't completely just say no, never, ever again and not patronize that business again. Why do we keep giving our money to these corporations? Like, this is kind of the whole... This is going to be controversial, sure. But this is kind of the whole pull yourselves up by your bootstraps thing. You, I can't pull myself up by my bootstraps. I can help you out though. And that's kind of the whole point. That comes from God, to be honest with you. If you read the Bible, I think it says something like that in there. We're supposed to be looking out for each other. If the God in me sees the God in you, then you don't really have to go straight to heaven to ask for the things you need that's what i'm here for in some cases like if you're being led by god then you went where you were supposed to go which would probably to me or someone <laughs> i'm kind of a heathen <laughs> anyway you went if you were led you went to where you needed to go and god didn't have to reach down and you know, it didn't have to be no crazy elaborate stuff. We're supposed to be looking out for each other. Us. And really, thank you, Trump. Because I feel like we're just now. Stop asking them for your stuff. The black dollar, I think we spend trillions. Trillions. But we giving it back. And mad. You see what I'm saying? Like, you can't. I have a house, right? <clears throat> and I filled my house with things. If I take the stuff I bought back to the store, 
and didn't get a refund or anything like that. I just took it to the store. I can't be mad that I don't have the stuff that I paid for. Like, that didn't make sense. <laughs> Y'all get what I'm saying? Y'all get what I'm saying? Like, we're asking for favors from Caucasian people who set up systems to make sure that if you know what you're doing, you can get ahead. You just gotta know what you're doing to get ahead, but also stop giving your money back to them. Like, let's start trusting each other and working with each other. Like, okay, I got two, two things, two things that we can do. And this might be a little bit of a reiteration because, you know, it makes sense. So two things we can do about the trust issues that we have within our communities. Number one, we really need to start, and I said this earlier, we really need to start examining our personal beliefs and prejudice, prejudices. Because I think a lot of, not all of it, some, some people are just pieces of shit, but a lot of the all lives matter people, they're, they just haven't sat to, and tried to understand like there there's an argument in their head instead of a moment where it's like shut the fuck up and listen to what they're saying and you might understand like you weren't preparing the next argument you were going to make on that one point they made in the very beginning that you disagreed with you would heard everything else they said that would have clarified it we do that too we do that too we jump to a conclusion and we run with it. We take the fuck off. And <clears throat> it creates issues for all of us. When white people do it, they're the ones who are out there making the laws and for the most part running the corporations and they're, lo they're the lobbyists who are persuading the Caucasian um, lawmakers into, you know, doing all this. You see what I'm saying? If we get to where we need to be, if we are examining why we're canceling that business, if we're examining why we don't do the simple click subscribe on this this black girl's channel like i i do this too i'll sit and watch somebody's whole channel or a uh, video on youtube or whatever <laughs> knowing full well that they're probably trying to make a living doing that i'll enjoy the video whatever the case it is and so be like Boop, next instead of just that click that one little click just to like the video so to to show show support and it's so simple like little things like that you do that or that you don't do can make such a huge difference for us for our people like it's time for us to really be this is point number two be intentionable about and in, in our support of black and brown people we have all been through a lot so sure i'll make a mistake sure i'll say something that you disagree with but at the end of the day at the end of the day it's not hard to support it's not hard to look out for us and this is how like the more we pull our resources together the more we look out the more we make sure that you know that person doesn't have to be out on the street kicking doors in or whatever like I don't know. I don't know what the kids are doing. <laughs> that, that guy doesn't have to be out there selling drugs to my family. You know? Um, my family doesn't have to uh, do drugs for, you know, pain management. Something they should have a prescription for. I'm, I'm actually going to be uh, a little can candid here. I, I have a close family member of mine who is unable to afford health care, period. And so what they do is drugs. There's people who don't give a fuck about that. 
they they don't hear that and they'll go on with their lives and you know skipping and all that shit but you know <laughs> we gotta do stuff about we gotta do something about that and it it's we have to start essentially the thing I think the thing that got to us with George Floyd and you know kicked off all this shit was we were able I guess forced put to put ourselves in his shoes to experience that the you know and then the calling out to the mom and you know I think every mother's heart broke hearing that who had a heart has a heart every mother's heart who heard that shattered into fucking pieces that wasn't just a man i don't give a fuck if he was a criminal i don't give a fuck if he robbed people even if he robbed me he didn't deserve to die like that regardless i mean if what he did before had if he was supposed to receive a death sentence that should have been given to him the way all people get the death sentence not on the fucking streets like we're in a, a war zone or something crazy like that and it shouldn't be you know I would yeah back to the point um we have to start looking at everyone as a part of our global family and some people some of your global family needs a lot more help than your than others so stop throwing your money at them and being mad because you're not seeing the changes you want to see in policy and legislation and execution of the shit that should be happening for we the people we have to make sure that we are not leaving people behind and we're gonna have to open ourselves up in ways that are probably gonna make us really fucking uncomfortable in order to make sure that it's all of us all of us have the opportunity to win you know so that was my video i hope you guys enjoyed it i i hope it really gives you something to think about um <clears throat> but uh oh another thing give back in meaningful ways i, I saw that down at the bottom make make it a point to give back in meaningful ways y'all thank you for tuning in thank y'all for sticking around and listening to the entirety of the message if it resonates with you please i need some support i'm trying to build my channel i would really love to see um my goal is a thousand subscribers by the end of this year if you could help me with that just push that little button you know what i'm saying i'm not out here trying to you know rob nobody and kick no doors and or whatever they be doing out there i'm just trying to figure out <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> hit the like button and um subscribe and i'll see y'all later